Hello everyone. It has been a while. I'm having a theme showing up. Well, first of all, I'm on this most divine, beautiful walk <laughs> out on a ridge in Ubud Bali. And obviously don't have my camera and my tripod set up, but I'm feeling inspired to share on a topic that has been super alive in my sessions this week with various people. And I notice lately whenever I get an idea for a video and I go, okay, I'll do it when I get home and I just never do it. So I'm just going to do it right here, despite my arm maybe getting a little tired. I want to talk about the never ending loop of trying to resolve our human and its personality and its personality flaws. <clears throat> it's something, you know, it's like, it's everything, everything has its shadow and its light and all of this, you know, the, all of the spirituality, all of the self-development, everything that we've all been, <laughs> just feel so many bugs on me, everything that we've all been giving our energy to along our path, it's, <laughs> that was a big one, it was, it is beautiful, it's so beautiful, you know, the light is that we're expanding we're making space within our being to become more of our soul's essence. You know, the soul is, the soul's essence is this, this energy that fills up the entire body and it feels so true and it feels so organic and it feels so natural and it feels so blissful. And then on top of that, we have all of the human and its conditioning, all of the layers. All, and it's like the, the human conditioning, it's very dense. <laughs> It's incredibly, incredibly dense. I don't think this is a sustainable, so I'm going to rest my arm on this. It's incredibly, incredibly dense because that's, that's the realm in which the human exists. The third, the third density dimension is the realm of physical matter and form, and it has to be dense for this to exist. But what we are also familiar with is much more ethereal realms of consciousness, of formlessness, of energy, where, you know, no longer is everything solid matter. And instead, hello, hello. <laughs> morning, um, instead it is these, these higher realms, these higher chakras, but it's, it's all energetic, it's formless. And it feels so light, like the true nature of what we are. It feels so light. And so when we play in this density dimension, naturally what comes with it are heavier thoughts, heavier emotions, density in all ways, because that's what we agreed to play with in this realm. There was literally no one on this walk. And the second I press record, there's like so many people. Um, so what we, can, we, what we can get caught in, in our journey of evolution, in our journey of expanding, in our journey of, um, you know, bathing every single one of ourselves in our body with the essence of our soul, with our truth, with our divinity, with what feels so, so good to us, you know, prior to all of the conditioning coming in and saying, you should do this, you should make money, you should be beautiful and look like this, you know, without all of those layers of programming and patterning, underneath is this beautiful, quite orgasmic soul that is just here to play and expand and it knows its truth. It knows exactly what it needs to do at any given moment and it knows that it is connected to a... Uh, a source, a source of very high frequency energy. And so, you know, we're all um, slowly, slowly, hati hati, as we would say over here in Bali, we are making our way back to that, that soul essence. But along the journey, what we're doing is we're working with our human self and all of their stuff. And so the whole self-help, self-development, even the spirituality industries have been built upon this notion of you are broken and you need fixing. And so what naturally happens is we can get stuck in these loops of never ending resolution of the human identity, of the personality, of the personality structures of what we are, which is really what the human is. You know, for instance, Sarah, her personality structure, you know, like, Sarah isn't the truth of what I am. That's a personality. That's like just a subset of, uh, you know, it's just data that I've accumulated and I've identified with. 
And that same goes for every single one of us. Our name, our personality, our whole identity is just a structure. It's just a structure. And it's, it is a beautiful structure in some way. The personality be, becomes like an extension of the soul's essence. But for a lot of people who have had very heavy conditioning from their, you know, early, can, early years and their family, what can happen is that they become so devoid of their soul's essence that they just become what we can call like a bot like a literally just a subset of programs that are operating thinking that they're this human and they're this mind and this is what I am this is what I think this is what I believe but really it has absolutely nothing to do with what that person truly is so the thing that what we can get stuck in that I want to speak to that's been coming up this week in my sessions is you know is this never-ending loop where we start to constantly resolve our person, our human, and we're constantly trying to heal it. We're constantly trying to fix it. We're constantly trying to like reprogram ourselves. And it's like, for me, you know, I do my fair share of that work and I have done my fair share of that work and it has been super supportive and I'm so grateful for it. But what came with that was this natural intuition of, okay, now it's time to exit out of the detox community. Now it's time to exit out of that whole paradigm and that teacher and that guru and whatever it is. There was like a natural shift of like, oh, I came what I, I came and I got what I needed and now it's complete and now I can go on and keep focusing on what I am, which is an eternally sovereign, free being with a very, a very, you know, beautiful delicious soul's essence that just wants to be heard and expressed in this life although you know that's I'm like I'm part of the lucky minority who get that ping and that intuition to kind of like to loop back out of some of these healing communities whereas other people spend their entire lives and I'm bringing this to you in case you're currently stuck in that loop or you will become stuck in that loop in the future some people spend their entire lives trying to resolve the flaws of their person. And what I want to share is that that never ends. It never ends. The parasite cleansing, the detoxing until you have the perfectly healthy body, the healing journey of trying to get yourself back into alignment, the spiritual journey of becoming less full of mind energy and more connected to spirit, like the entire thing. It really, really never ends. And as long as we keep on placing all of our emphasis on uh, I need to heal and I need to do this, I need to resolve this pattern, I need to keep ascending, and we don't just come back into the simplicity of the moment, which is just pure love. It is pure love for what the human is in this moment, what they're going through, all of their flaws. And the reason why it's endless when we are solely focusing on our human and our identity and resolving parts of our identity is because the personality structure of every human, including you, including me, is inherently flawed. And it's inherently flawed because it is personal. A personality is something that is separate from the whole. It is, it is a personal part of, it's like the personality takes everything personally. It makes everything mean something. It's so defensive. It's the egoic structure of our personalities. It's all just, it's on the defense. It's feeling where it's unworthy. It's feeling where it's superior, inferior. It's like constantly like a hierarchy because anytime we have separated ourselves from the whole and separated ourselves from source and we are believing that we are a human, it's inherently going to feel separate. And separation is just another word for I take things personally. And so it's important for us all to understand this right now because we're all doing super deep work on ourselves right now, which is so beautiful and so needed. But simultaneously, it is important. <laughs> oh my God, Aunt City over here. Um, it's important that we meditate and contemplate on the topic that there is no, there is no end result. It doesn't end. And all of the focus on resolving inherently flawed, so lovable, so beautiful, but inherently completely flawed aspects of our personality, what happens, hello, <laughs> what happens is we just remain 
looping in that because what we're doing is we're placing all of our focus and our emphasis on what is wrong. And what we, what we do, what happens then when we're constantly focusing on the ailment that we want to heal, on the next cleanse that we want to do that's just going to like clean us even more, you know, or the next retreat that we need to go to to upgrade ourselves, the next book we need to read. Like all of these things are beautiful, but they have to be seen through the eyes of balance and they have to be seen through the eyes of love, of like, I am not broken. I have all this junk and I've got all these patterns and all of this fear and all of this ancestral stuff that I see in my mum's lineage and all of that is there. And can that have sacred space to exist within my realm? Is that allowed to be here? What would it feel like for me to stop pushing it away and resisting these things and instead hold them so close and smile at my human and just go, oh my God, she's so cute. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's coming up. And as we start, as we stop pushing things away, what we naturally do is we stop excluding parts of ourselves, and we start making our experience so much more inclusive, which is another word for love. Love is inclusive, fear is exclusive. So if we're approaching all of these healing techniques and spirituality and all of these different things that are supporting us along our journey if we're approaching that from fear if we're approaching that from some kind of inherent belief system structure that there is something wrong with me and i need to be fixed there's something in my personality structure that needs resolution then we're coming to all of these beautiful tools from a state of fear and exclusivity <laughs> exclusiveness if that's a word we're coming from that space from separation separating from parts of ourselves, and then we remain viciously looping in needing more healing and more all of these different things even if it's something beautiful like Joe Dispenza meditations or reading high vibe books or whatever it's like we remain in that loop needing more because to begin with we approach that thing from a state of fear and exclusiveness of separating from parts, pushing it away, going, okay, there's something broken, I need fixing, what can I find to fix me? And I know it because people look at me to fix them, you know? Thousands of people come to me looking for resolution. And whilst I can provide, you know, channeled programs to help them work through some kind of curriculum and structure that I know will upgrade their life, no one is here to resolve you. You're unresolvable. <laughs> How does that feel? Just to breathe into that. I'm unresolvable. There's nothing to resolve. This is just a natural unfolding. It's a natural evolution. And my mind doesn't have an awful lot of control over that. In fact, my mind doesn't have any control over it. And the more I get my mind out of the way, then I can step into that true highest divine path, my truth, which is hearing all of the little intuitions coming through that say, hey, pick up that book, travel to that country, go speak to that person. Because those little things, those little like little hits that are coming through, they're not coming from fear. They're not coming from exclusiveness or separating from parts of yourself that you've deemed unlovable or unrespectable or unworthy, whatever it is. Like those little intuitive hits are coming from pure love because it's been fed through your channel, your intuition, and you can trust those movements forward. So in a sense, the, the message coming through is like, what happens when we stop searching for healing or ascension or stop searching for any of those things and we allow ourselves to be? We allow ourselves to be on this path, even if that means you have to go through 12 months of adrenal fatigue healing, which is just the deepest unraveling of your nervous system from all of the years of inauthenticity and inauthentic living. And maybe you have to take 12 months of just doing nothing and feeling like a total bum and just watching movies and Netflix. But after that 12 months, something starts to come online. You know, it's like sometimes clients reach out, they're like, I'm just so depressed, I can't get out of bed. And I'm like, don't get out of bed. See how that would feel. Stay in bed for three days. Can we trust that there is <clears throat> a current of life force energy that's conducting this reality? It is moving through us. And that if we stay in bed with depression, that 
if we just honor that cycle and we honor those days of feeling cloudy and what's the point and even suicidal, but if we fully give that space to be and exist as it is, it will move. It will shape shift into something else. And at some point the body will go, I want to get out of bed. I want to stretch. I want to go eat. I want to go have a spa. I want to go do something. So there is a natural evolution that's taking place and in a sense we we are safe to stop searching for healing because the more we search it's like the more out of reach it becomes in a sense you know it's like the more we like grasp something and um hmm, yeah there was like a whole nother thread that was coming through several months ago about like you know, healing and spiritual evolution and ascension happens in that middle path of surrendering and sitting back and waiting, almost like waiting for things to come into your path where it feels like such a yes, that you're opting into that thing from love instead of fear. I don't want people signing up to my programs in a space of fear. I have people reaching out to me with these long ears going, la, 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 and this is going to, la, la, and can I, and I'm just like, I'm like not trying to sell those people into the community because it's such a sacred high frequency container that it's like this decision making of our next step forward on our journey. It's got to be coming from a place of love and something inside of us that's expanding going, yes, yes, that's the next step forward on my journey. And then we know we're going to keep on evolving into that thing in a very effortless and organic and very natural way. So can we all just be so easy on ourselves during this time? And can we start to see the perfection of our flawed human and how gorgeous they are? They're so incredible with all of their stuff, all of their material. Some of us went through some really challenging things and that's gonna show up as an adult in our adult relationships and partnerships. I know I'm, I'm in that phase, I have been for the last year or two, you know, entering into a deep container with another man, with not another man, all of these men, with a man, a very special man, my best friend in the whole universe. And it's been confronting to witness my human, my, my identity go, oh my God, I thought I had my shit together so much more than this. And that's because relationship is the next evolution when we have done enough work within ourselves, it's not even the work, but when our soul is at a readiness, we will attract someone who will feel like the deepest, deeper soulmate. And then all the other layers will start emerging for healing because in some way they were, they were hidden whilst we were single because there was no mirroring taking place. None of those reflections were coming in. So relationship, oh my God, that dog is so cute. Relationship is the next evolution. And it's not always easy. It's not always easy. In fact, if you're in a conscious relationship, it's not going to be easy at all. Because you're going to have to look at all of the moments where you turned away from yourself in a moment of trauma and you disconnected from yourself with a capital S. And you isolated and you closed down and you felt you were unworthy and unlovable. It's like all of that is going to have to come up to the surface as you enter into that kind of relationship, which I'll talk about in a whole nother way. I think I'll start walking. Um, so what would it feel like to stop trying to resolve parts of our personality, which are, as I said, and I say it with so much love, they are inherently flawed, you know? And so what would it feel like to shift our focus from trying to heal these aspects of ourself, every single day waking up, oh, I need to heal my gut, I need to heal my liver, I need to do this. Instead, it's like shifting our awareness to loving, adoring, like absolutely adoring our human exactly as he or she is. It's a beautiful view. And as we do that, we start to include parts of ourself that fragmented and fractured off. And that is really all we're doing here. 
like on this heal, whole healing path, what we're doing is we're just integrating. We're integrating parts of us that split off and we're pulling them back in. And that creates some level of like root chakra stability and safety for us to start really rising up into our sexuality, self-worth, then rising up again into our power and the money poorer, into our, you know, like fullest identity. And then we come up into the heart and then we move up into these more ascended, more spiritual aspects of self. So the, the journey really, the, the only bit that we really have to focus on is just calling back in these fractured parts of self. And the way in which we do that is through inclusion and through so much love and so much compassion for everything the human has gone through. And as we do that, we effortlessly and organically move up the channel and we open our inner seeing, our inner insight, our intuition and like, you know, a lot of the work I do nowadays really is these upper things. Like there is a little bit still going on in like the lower body, the connection to the earth, the stability, the trauma. But as we start to move up, then it's like we activate these psychic abilities and we can step into our fullest contribution for this planet at this time. You know, because we're not going to be of support when we're just operating in our fear and survival of like, you know, maybe like at some level, the lower level and like not to say lower or higher, but like the activists, for instance, the grassroots, like getting down there with their sword and, you know, that's all relevant too. But for a lot of you who are following my content, the frequency resonance of your being, if you resonate with my videos, it's, it's of those higher channels of the love and the holding people in compassion, the inner seeing, the psychic abilities the balancing the masculine, the feminine, all of these energetic principles actually rebalance consciousness on planet Earth at this time. Let me see if there's anything else. That feels like it. Have a blah, blah, blah. I hope that you have a beautiful day, a beautiful evening. Um, my partner and I are about to launch a third YouTube channel that will just be supporting people in their own soulmate relationships. It'll be supporting things that come up in relationship. It'll be supporting balancing the masculine and feminine. We've got a lot planned. We've already got some videos we're going to upload, so we'll be launching that soon. Uh, if you want to be part of our close community, it's called The Soul Tribe. I'll link it below. It's on Facebook. Um, what else <laughs> yeah I have a few more things in the pipeline but I won't mention anything just now I love you so much I hope that you are remaining connected to yourself as best as you can during these tumultuous and somewhat challenging times and just remember your connection to the source and that when you're in the fear or the the chaotic thoughts that it's just that fractured personality ego structure that's worrying about this worrying about that but as we remember our connection to the whole we remember our connection to each other we naturally start to heal those fractures within our own individual identity and the collective identity the collective ego structure <laughs>